And our first guest tonight to discuss uh, the presidential election in uh, Slovakia is uh, Marcin Zaborowski, Policy Director, Future of Security Program at the GLOBSAG. Good evening. Good evening. So uh, I'd like to, to take a look at a you know, broader picture. Now, how important are presidential elections in, in Slovakia for the future of the uh, eastern flank of NATO? Not awfully important, frankly. I mean, uh, A, Slovakia is not necessarily a crucial member of the, of the eastern flank. It's a nation of the five million people. Uh, does doesn't really have a huge uh, uh, strategic or military importance. Uh, then uh, the election of the president itself, uh, who has quite limited competence, is uh, mostly of symbolic importance. Uh, and we need to remind our viewers here that a few months back, uh, Slovakia elected a, a, a pro, uh, a, a kind of a pro-Russian coalition led by a pro-Russian candidate, former Prime Minister Robert Fico, uh, and Peter Pellegrini is his ally. Uh, and then if Slovakia a few months later decides to choose a president who is pro-Western, then of course, symbolically, it's, uh, it's important. It's of significance, but uh, not, not more than that. I see. But does the president have no... Uh powers to somehow correct the, the policies of, of the government, the right to veto no. and so on? Does it, the presidential powers are much more limited than in Poland. Uh, the president does not, cannot really veto the, uh, you know, the legislation uh, to the same extent as that the president can do in Poland itself. Uh, it does have quite limited office. So the, the competence is, uh, there is some competence in foreign affairs, for example, all the ambassadorial nominations have to have presidential approval, just like in Poland. Uh, the similar thing with the chief of staff. But uh, overall, it's a kind of a uh, smaller country with a president who have uh, less, uh, fewer powers than the president would have had in Poland itself, uh, which already is not, not a great deal, frankly. Right. Nevertheless, it is a country bordering Ukraine and therefore could potentially become, you know, again, a very important uh, um, transport hub for, uh, for, for support in, in Ukraine, just the, the way uh, Poland is. Nevertheless, now I'd like to, to ask you about uh, this year's uh, presidential campaign. Uh, how would you uh, describe it? Was there any uh, digging for some dirt or, or, or maybe not? Well, the campaign was quite vicious and uh, was, uh, I would say, artificially dramatic uh, because we are talking about two people who have chosen a very different uh, divergent platforms. They are appealing to very different parts of electorate, but at the same time, these are the two people who know very, each other very well. So uh, they, they have just simply picked up on, on uh, running on the platforms which... Uh, uh, which are ideologically uh, very contrasting, uh, but in reality, uh, as I said, you know, in the past, Peter Pellegrini was the prime minister in the government in which uh, Ivan Korchuk served as a foreign minister. So uh, it's not like that, that there's some kind of a personal hatred there. But uh, but when you look into the platforms right now, it looks like that Pellegrini is appealing to uh, the message of uh, of peace. Uh, meaning uh, no support to Ukraine uh, and having cozy relationship with... Uh, That's uh, hardly with a message of peace, would you agree? Well, yes, but I'm, I'm telling you what, what, what kind mm. of a rhetoric they use in Slovakia. Yeah, in Slovakia, they say they, uh, that uh, Korczak is a candidate of war because he, he supports Ukraine and uh, uh, and the, the other one, meaning Pellegrini, is the, the, he positions himself as somebody who is opting for peace, meaning giving up and, uh, you know, basically giving Russians what they want. Uh, so that's, that's how the campaign itself is being portrayed in the country. Yeah. Right. So you described as uh, um, a bit um, uh, Petr Pellegrini. What about Ivan Korczak? Well, Korczak is, uh, is a recent... Uh, 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 he's only recently in politics. I mean, he's a career diplomat uh, and a very good diplomat. He, he's been in uh, serving in diplomacy for under various governments, left, right, center, whatever. Uh, and only in the last year and a half, he started to, he entered politics. Uh, and he's, uh, 
he's uh, he's somebody who's uh, you know very well acquainted with uh, uh, with couloirs in uh, Brussels, Washington, and so on. Is clearly pro-Western. He would uh, he would opt for continuing the policy of the former government, which was strongly supportive of Ukraine, and Ivan has always been very supportive of uh, of, uh, of Ukraine. Right from the beginning, he was one of the first people who was calling for the EU to open up. Uh, to Ukraine, even before the war started itself, uh, and Pellegrini, Pellegrini is a uh, is a typical politician who uh, used only a few years back he was considered a, a, a moderate because he split from his relationship with uh, Robert Fico. He was representing a kind of a more moderate moderate social democratic faction when he became prime minister. His government kind of uh, was governing from the center, but now he decided that tactically it's best for him to ally himself with Fizzo again and to court the pro-Russian sentiment, the pro-Russian electorate, which is quite strong in Slovakia. And people sometimes, they, they use the same measures towards Slovakia as they use towards electorate in Poland. It's very different. I mean, at least 50% of the Slovak population is openly pro-Russian. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, we have the slightly pro-Russian candidate. On the other, we have a pro-European candidate or pro-Western candidate. But I'm, uh, I'm wondering about uh, the support they've been receiving from abroad. Was there any uh, visible backing from, uh, from any uh, foreign actors uh, for these candidates? Well, Russia has been involved in disinformation campaign in Slovakia, which is not awfully difficult because media in Slovakia, independent media, are quite uh, weak, uh, badly financed, and it's uh, it's easy to influence them. Uh, so, uh, and the Russian meddling in election in Slovakia is uh, has a long history, uh, and uh, and at the same time, I mean, the uh, the government itself. Uh, happens to uh, to be cozy with the Russians, including the uh, the Russian business interests. So you, you definitely would have this kind of interference out there. Uh, at the same time, Ivan Korcha would be strongly supported from Brussels, would be supported from Washington, uh, would be supported by the former uh, president, uh, uh, Chaputova. So he is, uh, he is the candidate of what we would normally see as a, as a typical pro-Western um, pro politician. But like I said, I mean, he's he's in politics only recently. He, will, he was a, a career diplomat until recently. Marcin Zaborowski, Policy uh, Director of the Future of Security Program Globesec. Thank you so much for painting this broader uh, picture for us. And we'll be back after a short break. Thank you.